conversation. We're now joined by Baylor's Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes, with us on Tuesdays on 365 Sports. Did you know last week that when you were on with us with some of the comments about the Pac-12 and being available or being ready or what's best for Baylor in the Big 12 kind of spread throughout the country. And in some cases, some people took it as if you were being a proponent of raiding the Pac-12. No, I, I had no idea. I don't I don't really pay it, pay attention to, to, to much of that. You asked me a question, and, and I <clears throat> answered it truthfully. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so we move on and uh, you know I would I would tell you and I, I thought I was maybe I wasn't is was intentional about you know um, I don't think any of us um, are trying to dismantle the the, the pac 12 uh, if there's opportunity and uh, you know they uh, when Whenever their their TV media deal comes to fruition, and uh, in those institutions, uh, you know, uh, decide that it's it's not good for them, then then the Big Twelve will will be ready, and uh, and that's probably as as simple as as I can as I can say it, and it doesn't doesn't surprise me that it that it's spread because people like news, and plus. Um, everybody knows you guys and everybody listens to y'all. So, um, didn't, didn't surprise. By the way, Mac, and, and we appreciate your transparency and the way you are. And we discussed that as well. There were some that just took per headlines rather than the actual quotes. The quotes were in the stories and a lot of people did a great job of using the exact quotes. Uh, if you don't mind me following up with this, when you're on the phone with your Mark or Brett, your Mark or other ADs, how much current time is even discussing anything else outside of what you have right now? For example, do you even have, well, hey, what have you heard about this and that? Or is that even on the radar with most of your discussions? Um, I would just say most of our conversations are about, <clears throat> you know, the the 14 for one year, then the, then the 12. Uh, you know, it's it's primarily, I would I would say, you know, about, about you know conference operations and and you know particularly you know marketing and, and uh, you know being partners with with both ESPN and, and Fox. Um, so um, are there are there times when there's there's conversation about conference membership? Um, yeah, and and you know I don't it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Commissioner Yormark has, has talked about it publicly, and uh, in a in a different uh, a variety of different ways. But um, yeah, those those that want to believe that you know we're we're trying to dismantle um, the Pac-12, they can they can believe that. But that's that's not what we're trying to do. Um, but we're also going to be be ready. And and shame on us, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if if we weren't ready. Uh, if there's a if there's an opportunity, yeah, Mac. Yeah, everybody has to be ready for every possible contingency that could happen uh, all the time. I mean, you know, the the last thing you want to do is get caught flat footed again because the Big Twelve has been through that um, before, uh, and and obviously would never want to be in that that spot again. Mac, I know that this is maybe a little bit uh, optimistic or pie in the sky, but would it not be better if the leaders of college football discussed these issues? A had more openly so that everything doesn't feel so cloak and dagger yeah that's, a, that's an interesting question you know um, I, I think you know I, I think there's there's been more communication um, at least that's that's my sense uh, that's my opinion that uh, there's been more communication recently lately amongst the uh certainly amongst the the autonomy five power five commissioners um now some of it you know or a lot of it maybe has been been driven by the by the cfp and and uh and playoffs but you know i i also think there's there's uh beginning to to have conversations between the, the power five commissioners and and the ncaa as uh as we you know think about you know, look forward in 
terms of the, the future of, of college athletics. And, you know, Paul, it's, it's going to require more of that, um, you know, uh, more uh, acting collectively rather than independently. And, uh, but I, I, I do think that it's, it's shifting that way. And, uh, and I think that's, it's, it's good news. Mac, uh, I guess kind of staying on the same topic, did you have any thoughts or did it perk your interest at all when you heard some of the comments coming from Florida State and Clemson reps uh, last few days about unequal revenue sharing in the ACC and and not just bringing it up to, to donors and alumni, but, you know, publicly out there, but also putting a sense of urgency on it. Just from a college sports industry standpoint, I ask you that question, not so much the Big 12 and that, you know, that whole thing, but uh, was that on your radar at all? You know, <clears throat> certainly – there have been murmurs about it. Um, I didn't. I didn't expect it to become public like it like it did. And uh, and again, let me just be really clear this this, <laughs> this time around as well. You know, not not wanting you know the the ACC to to you know to to explode or or, or not exist. Um, these are these are hard problems. They're they're complicated problems. And, uh, you know, the ACC's TV media deal has been well documented. And, uh, and uh, what's, what's interesting, you know, the, the annual amount of, of that deal is pretty, pretty healthy. It's just, you know, the number of schools you're dividing it upon. But, you know, they also have a, a, a network as, as well. And so, you know, uh, Commissioner Phillips, uh, I've known him. We kind of we kind of grew up uh, somewhat in this in this business, and I've got great respect for him. Um, he's got a really hard job, but um, you know, I, I think and and I just know that that he will absolutely, you know, handle it to the to the very very best of his his ability, and uh, certainly certainly wish you know the the ACC and those and those members member schools, you know the best in terms of how they they navigate you know their their future mac if some schools showed interest in the big 12 in the future what is there any way after all of the big 12 and what you've been through is there any way that unequal revenue sharing would work man that's a that is a a fascinating that is a, a great question um you know, my, my gut reaction is uh, absolutely not. And, you know, I would probably want to spend a, a little bit more time mm-hmm. maybe maybe thinking about it. Is there a circumstance or two where, um, you know, it, it would be um, accepted by, by other members? Um, you know, I, I think it would have to be, you know, really – uh, unique and probably dire circumstances uh, for that, uh, but I I think that's think that's really really hard. And um, you know I, I, as I look to the future of the Big Twelve and the and the uh, twelve member institutions, uh, I, I just I don't see a scenario where that's where that that can happen, and uh, and nor should it uh, should it happen. Baylor Director of Athletics, Mac Rose, with us on 365 Sports. Paul? So, uh, Mac, do you get, um, when you hear these things around, does it just, does it like bubble in your stomach? I mean, because all these things are constantly going on. Uh, Does it add to the stress level just knowing that even though you have to, you know, lead your own institution and do all of those things and worry about your conference, that you're kind of, you know, in the best days in the bubble of only able to have to focus on your things. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I try not to, to let any of that, the, the noise, the distraction, you know, impact, impact me or impact how, how we, we make decisions. And so, you know, again, you know, try not to get on, on any, any roller coaster and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, my, my greatest responsibility uh, is to this institution, is to Baylor University, and especially 
to our young people, to our student athletes, and and to our staff, and uh, and and that's that's where my my focus is. And and, and until someone tells me otherwise, um, in, until God calls me to do something differently, then um, that's that's the way we're going to manage and and lead here at uh, at at Baylor. And, uh, you know, closely behind that is, is obviously, you know, for our future is, is conference and making sure that we have, we have stability, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make decisions. Uh, we're going to make decisions that are, that are best for, for Baylor and, uh, and again, especially our, our young people. Mac, did you lose your voice yelling at the end of last night's game in Stillwater? <laughs> As Baylor was trying to hold on, or because of what happened in Austin with the lady, uh, when the women's basketball team, excuse me, uh, winning a game that a lot of people didn't see coming. Yeah, probably, probably both. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, really excited, and uh, you know, watching the uh, the women down in Austin and, and being able to compete. And, you know. UT gets within, I think, two in the third quarter, and uh, we were able to, to overcome and, you know, um, finish out really, really strong. And, you know, just proud of that team. And, you know, certainly proud of, of Nikki and uh, the way she's leading that program. And, and again, staying focused on on the team, on our student athletes. And, you know, we, uh, I think we've got, again, a great future, great promise there with, with that program you know um we've we've you know played 11 games against the top 25 five opponents and you know that was our our fifth win which i think is is most among big 12 schools and so you know uh, really happy for them uh, in fact i was ecstatic for them and then my goodness the uh i was breathing you know my my heart rate was probably at about 48, 50, uh, all the way up until the last two minutes of the uh, of the Oklahoma State game, and then all of a sudden it, it climbed pretty quickly. So glad we were able to to, to finish that one out and uh, escape Stillwater with a with a win. And you know, looking looking forward to our two two remaining games for both both uh, men and women's basketball. You have, go ahead, Paul. Can you describe just from your perspective? the physical and mental drain that a Saturday, Monday, big Monday turnaround is in, in this league in the big 12. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's a bigger pull than, than any other conference because of the physicality of games. And, uh, you know, when you only have, <clears throat> you know, a day, you know, and maybe a half to, to fully recover and uh, physically and then, you know, mentally be, be prepared to go to battle because these are all battles again. Uh, it's, it's hard and uh, got great admiration for our student athletes. We've got great admiration for our, our staff. Um, the way, you know, you've got to, you've got to, the moment, you know, your game, you know, ends, um, whether women versus Texas Tech or men versus, you know, UT, you got to boom, flip the switch immediately and think about moving forward and recovery and, and game plan and, and all of that and, uh, and be ready to go. And, uh, so it's, it's hard. It's, uh, it's a, this is a tough, really tough league to do that. Both, both in, in men and women's basketball. How difficult is it to have 14 events on your campus this weekend? 14 going on basically all within a matter of hours, if not at the same time. How stretched is your athletic department? It's, it's stretched, and, and we have a, an amazing team, amazing event management facilities team, you know, led by, by Henry Howard and, uh, you know, a great group of, of people that, that, honestly, they work tirelessly. And, uh, and they, they never really get the credit that they deserve. But um, as you mentioned, this, this Baylor Bold weekend, 14, 14 events and prizes, a block party outside the Baylor, uh, Baylor Ballpark Saturday from 1 to 5. You know, can't wait to see all of the families out there. And, 
you know, the, 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 the basketball games, all of it. And uh, it, uh, it should be a, a great weekend. And again, our, our staff is, is amazing and just grateful for all of the hard work um, that, that they put in. And um, I think what's best is, is they, they never look for or ask for, for recognition. Now, shame on us if we, if we don't. But they, they do what they do uh, because they, they love what they do and they do it for our student athletes. I have a question about Brigham Young. Do they have their own network? Um, so, you know, there is, there is BYU television. Um, and, you know, I, I really, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't want to provide any misinformation. I don't know what they do in terms of, you know, televising um, anything athletically. Um, I do know that there's there's been no special accommodation made for you know BYU or BYU television um, as we think about you know their membership and our and our TV partners right it's it's going to be for them it's going to be ESPN it's going to be you know. Uh, Fox and and all of the the different platforms. Yeah, Mac. Actually, um, and this was before you were at Baylor. You might have still been. Gosh, it. Uh, I don't even know. But before Missouri, I don't. I don't know. But it, they Houston Baylor. Akron. Yeah, Baylor played BYU on BYU TV, and my friends and I had to go to Buffalo Wild Wings to watch it <laughs> <laughs> because none of yeah. us had it but it was a kind of a one-off thing and even uh, there was a, a guy named brett here in local media who was a byu grad and said yeah this is this is something they're just trying out because you know let's see if we can get a game or so on here and because it wouldn't have been on television anyway baylor was like yeah sure whatever you know put it on byu tv we don't care but i, I don't think that i don't think that's something that they've they've made a long-term strategy of theirs yeah no you know our third tier rights and you know this happened I can't even remember now, maybe three years ago, but, uh, you know, eight of the 10, you know, we all decided that, that we were, you know, handing over our, our third tier, tier rights to, at that time to, to, uh, to ESPN and, you know, the, the new TV deal, right. Um, ESPN box, you know, own, own all of the, the TV rights. Mac, uh, I got, it's just off the top of my head. What is the earliest in the morning you have ever had a coach without saying their name call you just to discuss something? <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can remember, you know, at least one, one time vividly 4:30 AM. So, um, that's probably the, the earliest and it, and it wasn't necessarily because we, we had, um, we, we had, you know, any, any type of conduct issue. Uh, it was just, uh, they, they wanted to have a conversation and thought I, I might be up. So do you always have your phone on ring? Cause I'm calling at four thirty one. Um, I do. Um, <laughs> If I see your name, I can. You can bet I'm not hitting the green button. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, get some lozenges, man, and uh, good luck with your voice. We'll see you. We'll see you the rest of the week with all that's going on this weekend. Thank you very much for your time and transparency. All right, appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Mac Rhodes, director of athletics. Who was it?